Yeah, uh, just start by saying how much respect I have for that football team, uh, their football team. They competed to the very end. I thought the quarterback, Bud Dunn, was a competitor, gritty, tough. They came here to try to win the game. I respect that. I respect the way they played. And two was in the game to the very end. So that was a that was a kind of a competitive stamina and fire that we needed to compete against. Really happy with our twos at the end of the game, keep them out of the end zone. Uh, you know, the two out of three games we've had four quarter shutout. Um, really happy with our two offense. They went down and scored a touchdown. So, uh, with else, any questions you guys have? Coach, there's 48 offensive plays from scrimmage. I mean, just the, the flow of this game, just with how they were moving the ball with a 10 minute drive to start, and how much did it kind of maybe throw the rhythm of what you wanted to do all the time? Well, the 40 plays because we went right down and score. You know, we had three possessions and we scored on three possessions, right? So, it's, um, yeah, but they did a great job in that they used up 10 minutes on that first drive. I mean, they were literally just sitting in the huddle looking at the sideline. That was a master class by Coach Farley and how to keep these games you know, the way you want to keep them, right? Um, move the pocket, ran the quarterback. They cut us a ton. So, you know, we have, these, we have these pass rushers, and all of a sudden now they got a fullback cutting them on their legs. Really well done by them. Um, but I think offensively, you know, we scored our touchdowns on our first three drives. And we got down there and you know, we went four on fourth and three on the fourth drive. So we just won a lot of drives. So, yes, I'd love the defense to be able to get the ball back for us a little bit sooner. But I also thought the offense was unbelievably efficient. You know, you go down the next, then you come out of the half. You know, we, we answer a you know, takeaway the first drive. We'll take, we answer a takeaway, we go down and score, and we have to get in the end zone. And then the next drive, we score. So, um, you know, not a lot of pump work tonight for uh, Bushi. There was a 59 yard pass from Dylan to, to Dalen. And he kind of shakes three and, and then kind of looks back. What did you think of that, of, of just his skill set on that play and his, his, his awareness to, to look so quickly back to see if Jalen was there? Well, that's the same play we ran last week that, you know, the kind of play that everyone made, you know, kind of a, was kind of a high angle play that he threw on the run. So that's the play where we roll right and then we throw a post back left. You have to have an elite athlete like Jalen to do that. And um, so they blitzed off the edge. And so it's not, that's not, that's not the right play for that defense. So they called the right defense. But, you know, I've noticed a lot, even in the first game, he's done a great job of always avoiding the first rusher. When people come free, he does a good job of, you know, fi find, you know finding space and time and able to throw. But, you know, he, he, he knew that that's where to go, especially with pressure. He knows, he knows he's going to flatten it. And Jalen was right where he was supposed to be. Did you see that in him through the offseason, that he was going to have that, you know, like that ability to have that, that, that sense of where the pass rush was coming from and, and the mobility to avoid a guy in a situation like that? Yeah, you know, when people have asked me what you know what makes him special, I said he's not a seven-on-seven seven quarterback. You know, he likes the game part of it. Um, even the you know, even the short yardage play, you know, that's um, that's, uh, that's that's what, you know, J.J. McCarthy was going to Michigan last year, you know, handing out the fullback dive, 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 they come out tight, you know, he pulled it every once in a while and he pulled it, you know. So um, he just, you know, he just knows when to make the right play. We're a quarter away through the season. Uh, what do you love? What do you hate? Uh, I don't know about that. Um, I, love, I like being 3-0. There's nothing that I hate. Um, um, you know, we're just going to get better each week. You know, when we start Big Ten play, you know, I, I kind of refer to this as the preseason. In my mind, we're learning, we're learning how to win. As I told our team, the narrative of losing close games comes from trying to, when you get a lead, not trying to put the game away. And so the questions I get asked a lot are about, like, hey, you know, why aren't you guys doing more of this in the second half? Well, that's what led to a lot of those losses, right? So we want to score, get a lead if we can, play defense and run the football. And then I want everyone to say, why are you guys so boring in the fourth quarter? And then you win. And that's I mean, that's good. So I just to make sure my team hears that because they're, they're, you know, they're kind of like that. That being said, you know, we wanted to be aggressive for a while because this was a good night for us to work on our passing game. And that's why we threw that post at the end. It was there. We thought we had it. Um, it was how like their kid made a play. You know, I thought we came down with it, but we didn't. So it is what it is. But um, yeah, I think uh, I think uh, uh, I'll watch the tape to see exactly where we are. You know, I felt like early on we didn't tackle as well as we normally do, and uh, but I did I did like the energy the defense came out with in the second half. That had all the makings of one of those games where like, you know, if you're not locked in the second half, they score a touchdown. All of a sudden, you know, it looks like a, it looks like a game you're in control if you're not. And what we're trying to do is control games, control games, control games. It's what good teams do. So I felt some of that today. Carter Nelson had four catches, 48 yards, gets in the end zone for the first time to Oscar. Just uh, can you speak to his growth to get to this point and having arrived in the summer? Yeah, and Carter's, Carter's, you know, like you said, this is his third game playing with, you know, 22 people in the field. You know, so, I mean, he's he's growing. And, um, um, you know, he had a couple little packages for him. You know, two of them got called early, which was great. You know, one was a the red zone call, which is like an option route. And he, he won on the option and scored. Um, you know, through the middle screen to him, so um, you know I think the sky's the limit for the things that he can do. 
uh, you know, they're doing a good job of bringing him along you know, slowly, in my mind, when I say slowly, in terms of like giving him tasks to master because he wasn't here in the spring. But tonight was a tough night to get the ball spread out to everybody, going back to the whole 48 plates. You know, you have all these guys you want to get the rock to, but it's a good thing when, you know, the <coughs> ball jail and he, you know, he changes the flips of the field. And they had a penalty that gave us some yards as well. So, What, what was your, uh, what, how did you feel about getting the package for Heinrich in, um, down there near the goal line? And, um, you know, what did you think of the way that that executed? Yeah, we put we put it in. We put it in. Um, he, he was in on the on the, the screen to melt to Carter. He was in on the tailback on that too. So, um, you know, uh, I think there's a lot of things that we want Heinrich to Heinrich to be able to do. And he does, every time he goes in, we don't want him just always just to be like, you know, a wildcat quarterback, right? Uh, I thought I was really pleased with Heinrich when he got in at quarterback. The way he managed that third down, finally checked down, was awesome. And uh, you know, he he. Uh, they were bringing a lot of zero blitz. He checked, they checked, he reloaded it, and the long touchdown run. But yeah, I mean, I, you know, we like we like to get a little bit more out of the quarterback running part of it. But I'll be honest with you, Mitch. One thing I've learned: every time we put a quarterback run on tape, another team has to practice it, and so they don't have to necessarily work. I just have to chew up 20 minutes of their time each day, worrying about option, worrying about those things, because we can run all the options with time. We can get under center still and run belly G option, right? We can do all that, and so I need them practicing that because that's one less time that they're practicing the other stuff that we're. Doing. What, uh, what did Emmett show you this week in practice that got him an earlier chance and then did he take another step in the game with his big players? Yeah, uh, well, you know, um, we wanted Emmett to be the third down back this week. Uh, we, were, we, were, we felt like he would do a good job of the protections and getting out catching the football. We're trying to diversify some of the roles. We didn't have a ton of third downs. You know, we were kind of not, not necessarily needing the third downs. And then that run at the end was great. You know, one, one thing about Emmett that's happened, you know, last year and this year is he's kind of like been a closer in some games, right? Whether it was Northwestern last year or Purdue or I can't remember the game started to run together for me. But even, you know, Maryland, oh, Maryland, Wisconsin, he had long runs that put us in position to at least try to win those games. And so he's, he's a guy that comes in the fourth quarter, change pace, makes people miss. And that was a big time run for us. Michael was out, and I don't think Jamari played. What was their status tonight? Yeah, Jamari just is still sore from last week. So we, we got him ready to play. He was warmed up. And, uh, you know, we were going to start Cam. So he was kind of questionable. And then kind of got out there and just didn't have to say pop. I just was worried that if I played him, he, he might get hurt. And so, uh, feel good about James and Kiona. Um, he just didn't have the, the burst that we thought he would. He was trending practice on the practice a, a little bit on Tuesday, practice a little bit, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday. So I thought he'd be able to go. And if he needed to, he probably would have gone. But um, this was a unique week, and that was a short week as well. You know, we're, we're on, in Big Ten play on Friday. So being able to save him, um, not need him, was probably important. And then, uh, you know, Mike, I'll probably address that later. It's just the coach is sitting. He's still with us. I just used to do that. How prepared is this team now for Big Ten play? How nice has it been to have the three home games and, and just to kind of build your team here in, in Lincoln versus on the road? Like yeah, I think one of the, one of the key things, Sean, is getting getting a lot of guys in the game. You know, even at the end, you know, you have, you know, you have Maverick Noonan, you have, you know, uh, Ismael Smith Flores, you have Lamari Sanders, you have all these guys out there playing meaningful minutes. You have your whole second line playing meaningful minutes. And so that, that to me, that's been really good that with two or three games, we've been able to get the twos and some of the threes into the game. Um, you know, you never know. You never know when it comes to conference play. You never know where you are until you get there, right? And so, um, you know, some teams blow out. Some teams, some teams, you know, play out team closer. It's really when you look at stats. I don't. I don't. When I look at the Big Ten, I don't look at Big Ten versus Big Ten stats. I don't look at even the non-con stats. So Big Ten puts out like their Big Ten only stats because I have to see, we have to see kind of how, where we are and look to each other. So I'm anxious for Friday night. I'm anxious, you know, that they're a good team. I think, you know, I think they'll probably end up being ranked. Hopefully we stay ranked, and I don't know the last time ranked two direct teams played each other. I think they were 26 last year. We can made people a big fan of Coach Bielema. So hopefully they move up and be a you know be a cool night on this coming Friday night. Can you talk about just dealing with the short week heading into conference play and just preparation for that? Yeah, well you know last last year we were going into this game we just lost to Michigan and we put on pads and practiced on Sunday, so maybe a little different tenor. This week, but um, you know, even there, and as I was walking out, Marquise Buford was making it very clear to everybody, like you know, we're coming in here tomorrow, ready to work. You know, normally Sunday's our off day. You know, we do a big family dinner with Claire's families and our families. We know we won't be able to do that tomorrow. It'll be a work day for us, and our, our off off day this week will be next Saturday. So we'll work tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The great thing is we're not traveling. You know, our Friday night, our Friday game is you know obviously at the end of the season versus versus Iowa, but uh, we'll we'll work tonight and we'll work tomorrow. Um, we, because it was a night game, I had a chance to you know, watch their game today. We worked, we worked some today, worked some yesterday. He prepared for Illinois, and um, we'll see what happens. Just Coach Jacory, after so many big plays have gotten called back over the first couple games, he finally finds the end zone. What was that moment like, just getting to see him score? 
I was fired up for him, you know. I mean, uh, thought that was a heck of a call by, you know, Sat. I mean, you know, calling reverse on the 12, I, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I'm a little more conservative. But, uh, and I thought, you know, Borkinshire did a great job, came around and made a big block for him. And uh, great to see Corey get in. And, you know, when he plays, he plays with joy. And it was great, you know, a great to see the review kind of go our way. That was a big call, you know, when, when he, you know, they had called him down the field. And then, and then you know, they ruled that he was behind the line. I appreciate the Big Ten. For, for changing that one. So, um, uh, yeah, DeCorey's a weapon. You know, he had that deep over uh, that we um, we hit early on, so we're trying to find ways to get in the ball. The interception by Dylan um, obviously challenged it. Uh, what did you think of that play? I mean, do you, do you want, to, want to make the throw? That oh, that's throw the right or? throw. Yeah, that's 100% the right throw. I mean, it's, it's quarters, safety triggers. We're trying to throw the uh, out route to Thomas. He triggers it, you throw the post. That's one on one. You know, we're. You know, the thing with Dylan is you're, you're going to play NFL football with him. Like if, if he's going to throw the ball to a spot and he's expecting his guys to make a play on the ball, and I thought Jalen made the play on the ball, so I'm not standing anyway throwing Jalen on the bus. Looks like their kid made a play. You know, but um, if we don't put those things on tape, then we'll throw the post first quarters. It's going to be a long year. You know, we had that conversation. I think Sam had it asked the other day about you know Iowa and all. So you have to hit those posts, and uh, their kid made a nice play. Um, I challenged it because I learned last year. You know, we had we had three or four plays that the next day, hey, the replay was wrong. And so what I learned was you can replay, challenge the replay. So as I looked at it up on the screen, it looked like Jalen came down with the ball, so I was at least going to challenge it. I didn't need the timeout. It wasn't a waste of timeout. They told me that, hey, they've already cleared it, but I was told last year you can still challenge it. You should still challenge it if you think it's wrong, so I challenged it. Um, didn't we? All right. Thank you. See you guys Friday. Good <laughs>